What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and I have news to share with you regarding the new iPhone 7, 7 Plus, and that small, tiny one that's supposed to be called the iPhone 5SE, or supposedly a new name, the iPhone SE. So a uh, little bit of details on every single one in this video. As usual, this is part eight in my mini rumors, leaks, everything series. So I'll combine everything in this one video to give you guys the latest scoop on these devices. Now, uh, let's start with the smaller one, the iPhone 5SE. Initially, it was supposed to be called the iPhone 7 Mini, then the iPhone 6C, then the iPhone 5SE, and now there's a new name, the iPhone SE. So uh, the new name is actually supposed to be just iPhone Special Edition. Beyond that, there's no other meaning to it, no number in the sequence. It's just basically an updated, revised iPhone 5S, but we already knew that. So uh, the new name, I think, makes the most sense. I would rather not have a number attached that's you know two, three years old, the iPhone 5. So um, iPhone SE Special Edition makes enough sense. It's gonna be special for people that like the smaller form factor and wanna keep it. So the biggest news surrounding this smaller iPhone right now is the design leaked. You know, Apple usually sends out schematics to case manufacturers to build cases before the phone is actually released. They want to make sure they're well equipped with cases. And now one of these case manufacturers has leaked these schematics. You know, just taking a look at it in the picture, it's a very evident that this might be the real deal. And what's interesting is that the power button is on the side, just like that leaked image that showcased a few weeks ago. So uh, actual design differences, the edges are rounded. So uh, not so much like the 5S where they were chamfered and the 5, you know, it's a little bit different of a design. You can say it looks just like an iPhone 6 or 6S mini. The back has the antenna bands signifying, you know, a very, very similar design to the iPhone 6 or 6S and the flash unit is a little bit different. It's now combined into one circle. However, there were two models here, one with an elongated flash and one with a single unit. Front of the phone, bezels look the same. The design overall looks very similar. It's just, you know, small little details here and there that signify this is the new iPhone SE. Now this isn't anything surprising, but early February, Apple started production on the 5SE or SE. It's gonna take a minute for me to get used to saying that. So analysts have reported that it's well into production, underway, and it's supposed to sell roughly around 10 million units this quarter. So uh, let's see how that does. And last bit of news on the iPhone SE, the smaller iPhone. Uh, it's actually very good news. I was very happy to hear it. So last minute changes, Apple has decided to put the A9 chip into the iPhone SE. So uh, I don't know if this is because of the backlash from everybody that heard about this rumor. So a lot of people were unhappy that Apple would be shipping a smaller phone that's new with old hardware. It just doesn't make sense. So, you know, Apple wants to make their customers happy. And this has happened several times in the, you know, the last few weeks. Apple fixed error 53. They're fixing a lot of issues that people, you know, get into an uproar about. So Apple does listen to people just when enough of them make enough noise. And in this case, the Apple A9 chip that's gonna be used in it will be very good for people that like the smaller form factor but don't wanna have a smaller phone as a result. I'm very happy that Apple's made that change. Let's see if it actually you know comes through and uh, when we do see it, hopefully it ships with this processor. All right, so that's the iPhone SE, smaller iPhone, pretty much not as much development, but we're gonna be seeing it very, very soon, March 15th with a release very soon after on March 18th. I'll be covering everything on that. So the iPhone 7. You know, Samsung just announced their new phone. I want to talk about this for a sec. I know you came here to learn about the iPhone 7, but I just wanted to say uh, for its main competitor, the Samsung Galaxy S7, I just went to see it today. I saw a production unit at Best Buy and, you know, approaching it looked just like the S6 and S6 Edge. There wasn't much different, but Samsung has went and done something incredible with this phone. It's what the S6 should have been. A lot of people are saying that, but I disagree. I think this thing is a completely different monster uh, in its own way. So it's not like the whole thing is amazing. Little bits here and there that they changed and improved make this thing a worthy contender, even to the iPhone 7. So number one, waterproofing. It's been waterproofed inside out. Apple's got a lot of catching up to do here. Hopefully, you know, all of the rumors, all the patents we've seen on the iPhone 7 are true and it will indeed be waterproof. And it makes sense because it's supposed to be adding wireless charging, removing the headphone jack. This all makes sense and adds up to a waterproof design. The Galaxy S7 also has has the fastest focus I have ever seen on a phone. You can literally have it right here, bring it in real close to a subject and it will focus just like that. I was blown away, you know, bring up uh, items into its focus field, boom, instantly focused. I've never seen that on a phone before and I was so blown away. So 
Hopefully Apple makes upgrades here as well. And that dual lens system that the iPhone 7 will be implementing should take care of focus. It'll have an always on focus feature similar. So uh, hopefully we see something like that. The Galaxy S7 did also add micro SD card support. So in a day and age where files are growing, you know, 4K video, live photos, we need more storage. 16 gigabytes is unacceptable. So as we know, the iPhone 7 will be introducing a 32 gigabyte base storage option. But beyond that, it's been confirmed 256 gigabytes will be the highest option on the iPhone 7 Plus. But in the latest rumor, it's uh, supposedly coming to the iPhone 7 regular version as well. It's to be produced by Samsung using UFS technology. So this would allow for 850 megabit transfer speeds. And if you combine a USB 3.0 standard with that new chip uh, for the storage, you can transfer a five gigabyte movie in as little as 12 seconds. So uh, that's great. And the fact that the iPhone 7 doesn't have a micro SD card, it has to compensate with higher storage options. I think the day and age is right. It's time to get a 256 gigabyte option and hopefully it will happen. The dual camera lens setup is all but confirmed for the iPhone 7. I talked about it in my last update video. And in this video, I wanted to point you to a video that actually demos this technology and uh, they have some impressive results. The focus is almost instantaneous when using a dual lens setup. This actually puts it to the test and compares it to uh, an actual iPhone 6s lens and when actually testing I was impressed with just how great the quality was zoomed in not only does it give you optical zoom you know the quality is better with another lens as well the LG G5 is one of the first phones in 2016 to implement this technology I'm not saying it's new but you know a newer version of it is coming and it's being implemented in 2016 and 2017 so do check out this video it'll be down below in the description very impressive and the iPhone 7 will make great use of it in latest news also the iPhone 7 is supposed to be unhackable so Apple is reportedly working on a new iPhone that's supposed to resist even their own hacking attempts that's how committed they are to protecting our security and this is all in wake of the whole Apple versus FBI issue and I think it's great uh, for the battle against FBI not so great for us jailbreakers you know an unhackable iPhone possibly means an almost impossible OS to jailbreak and that's not good but in the past every attempt from Apple to make a phone unjailbreakable hasn't worked out yet. Uh, maybe we'll be seeing jailbreaks in the future as well. Who knows? I really can't say, but an unhackable iPhone is being worked on, very likely to be implemented into the iPhone 7. So Apple is really, really serious about this whole FBI issue where they're forcing them to unlock phones or uh, wanting them to create a backdoor in phones. They're going to create a phone that cannot be hacked even by themselves when they've got a gun to their head. So this one actually uh, raised an eyebrow for me. I was very interested to hear about it. So ET News is reporting that the iPhone 7 will implement EMI shielding. So what is this? Basically, it's a very, very thin coat that Apple places on components inside of the iPhone. You know, usually the wireless chips, Bluetooth, and the radio chip. So what does it do? It reduces electromagnetic interference on the iPhone. And uh, this is a topic not many people actually talk about. iPhones and phones nowadays in general create more electromagnetic interference than phones back in the day. Although definitely not as bad as the very, very early days, this might pose a health hazard. A lot of people don't really know. It's supposedly like a myth conspiracy that it can create cancer by talking on your phone a lot. And who knows? You know, I'm no scientist. I don't know anything about this, but Apple is working on a new technology that's currently even implemented in the Apple Watch and they want to add it to the iPhone to reduce electromagnetic interference. Not only would this be better for your health, supposedly, this would actually create logic boards and chips that use less space and increase performance as well. So less space used by a logic board is more space to add a larger battery with. And Apple should take cue from the Galaxy S7. Uh, it would be great to add a larger battery to compensate for no removable battery. So this new shielding is supposed to go in effect with the iPhone 7 and it has been used on the S1 on the Apple Watch already. So it's nothing outlandish, you know, it's already being used. It's just gonna be added to the iPhone 7 to save space inside and reduce interference. In my last video, I talked about wireless charging. It's all but been confirmed for the iPhone 7 and the whole waterproofing, wireless charging, the everything ties in together. So I think definitely the iPhone 7 is gonna be more of a true competitor to the Galaxy S7 than the iPhone 6S is now. It's gonna add a lot of features from the S7 and we'll see. Hopefully it will adopt some of those technologies from the S7 and really become a true competitor. So guys, that's just about it. Small little update on both of these devices. I'm very excited for the iPhone 7, but more for the 5SE or 
SE that's coming out next month and I'll be covering everything on that and I'll stay tuned for many more news on all these devices guys as well as the S7 videos I've got a lot planned so stay tuned for that have a great day peace